as the largest freshwater reservoir in the United States and the main source of water for not one, not two, but three major U.S. states, to say that Lake Mead is an integral part of our nation's infrastructure would be an understatement. As a result, with a recent drought causing water levels to be consistently at their lowest in the lake's history, and with no end in sight, it is understandable that scientists and experts are starting to worry. Add to that the growing instances of dead bodies surfacing after decades of being underwater. An old World War II boat also being revealed just last year with an old bomber soon on its way. And estimates that underwater buried towns and factories that haven't been seen under the sun nearly for a hundred years will also resurface within the next decade. And you'd be forgiven for joining their concerns. But the thing is, that's not even the worst part. In fact, all of these things pale in comparison to the true reality of the drying of Lake Mead. So strap in while we tell you about the deadly mistakes that plague the history of the lake and the harsh realities that we have to face because if this continues, the American Southwest might not see proper life again for hundreds of years. A little background. For those of you who didn't pay attention in geography, here's a little reminder. Situated on the border of Nevada and Arizona, Lake Mead is a man-made reservoir that was formed with the construction of the Hoover Dam on the Colorado River back in the 30s. Since then, the lake, which is able to hold 28.23 million acre feet of water at peak capacity, has been a vital source of water for the surrounding states of Arizona and Nevada, as well as California and parts of Mexico, and is directly responsible for the existence of huge desert cities like Phoenix, and more importantly, Vegas. In fact, not only is Vegas the closest city to the reservoir, its entire existence is only possible because of it. Not only that, the entirety of Nevada relies on the lake as basically its sole source of water, with the reservoir providing more than 90% of the state's needs. The situation is slightly more reasonable in Arizona and California, with both of those relying on the lake for 40 and 30% of their needs, but even that's too big a number when you take the current situation into account. So let's talk about those, shall we? The Great Drying. If by some coincidence you haven't come across this news by now, the American Southwest is quite famously going through one of the worst droughts in recorded history, and Lake Mead just happens to be at the center of that drought. You see, the lake gets all of its water from the Colorado River, on which it's situated, and with a sharp drop in rainfall, the river simply has not been getting enough water to fill the reservoir up to the required levels. But as you can imagine, there's more than just the rain drought at play here. As some of you may be aware, the Colorado River, like most major rivers, gets most of its water from the melting of ice caps on the top of mountains in the summer. And for Colorado, those mountains are the Rockies. However, unfortunately for us, the ice caps on top of the Rockies have been shrinking in the past couple of decades due to increasing climate change impact. In fact, according to a UN report, the ice sheets on top of all mountains in North America, including the Rockies, have shrunk by over 22% in recent years since higher global temperatures caused the ice to melt faster than it can replenish in the winter. And unlike other rivers, which source their water from multiple mountain ranges and alternate sources, for some like the Colorado River, which exists isolated in an already drought-ridden environment, having a reduced supply at the start means the river is affected a lot more than similar rivers in other places. With that in mind, it should not be hard to see why Lake Mead has been affected so deeply. Not only have the drought and climate change cut its supply, but they've also increased the water usage in the nearby areas as they struggle with dried up water sources as well. Add to that the naturally rising population and you have yourself a potential ecological disaster. But that's not all. There are actually two more secret and far more terrifying reasons for this drying up that if true, and scientists are pretty sure that they are, could signal a long-term disaster for the entire nation in the near future. But before we get into those, 
let's take a look at some of the eerie and worrying effects that we are already seeing with the lakes drying, hidden secrets, and other issues. As we have mentioned at the beginning of this video, as of right now, Lake Mead is at the lowest capacity it's ever seen in its almost 90 year long history, with the water level at only 27% of its maximum capacity. And while that has obviously had its issues with the water supply in the surrounding regions, with local ranches and farms having to cut down, and in some cases outright stop some agricultural activities, not to mention the energy generation concerns at Hoover Dam itself. But those are far from the only effects that the decrease in water levels has had. For one thing, the lower water level means that the land around and in the lake looks wildly different from how it looks usually. In fact, entire islands and different shorelines have appeared that have only been observed occasionally in the past. More strikingly, the shoreline around the lake, which used to be underwater, has dried up and turned a whitish color, creating an effect that people have dubbed the bathtub ring, since it looks like a ceramic bathtub surrounding the lake. And then there are the creepy finds. For example, in May of last year, people boating on the lake found a barrel, which when they looked inside, revealed the remains of a dead person, which according to law enforcement and local experts, probably belonged to someone killed by the Vegas mob in the 60s or 70s, who had a habit of trapping people in barrels before throwing them into the lake. Now, that would have been creepy on its own, but just one week later, two sisters, Lynette and Lindsay Melvin, paddle boarding on the lake came across another creepy find on a sandbar in the lake. At first, they thought it looked like a rock, but as they grew closer, they thought it might have been the skull of a bighorn sheep from the local mountains. But when they finally reached the object, it turned out to be, you guessed it, another dead body. Since then, rangers and other visitors have located multiple other bodies, as well as sunken boats and old remains from a rock-crushing plant and St. Thomas, a town that existed in the area before it was turned into a lake. And you don't need to resort to superstition to see how things as old as these turning up shows just how unprecedented this situation is. And according to researchers, that's because this might not be just a drought and climate change situation in the first place. In the words of Brad Udall, a water and climate scientist at Colorado State University who's been studying this situation, it's time to stop calling this a drought because that obfuscates what's happening here. Droughts are temporary. What we're seeing is anything but temporary. With that said, let's get into the next topic, the water apocalypse. Now, as we mentioned, Cities like Vegas and Phoenix simply would not be what they are right now without Lake Mead's water. But sustaining huge cities is not the only thing that the lake is made for. You see, back in the 50s, as the usefulness of the Hoover Dam and Lake Mead became apparent, the United States Bureau of Reclamation initiated a program called the Colorado River Storage Project. The project was supposed to involve building and operating a network of dams, reservoirs, and hydroelectric power plants along the Colorado River and its tributaries, from the Rocky Mountains down to California, through, you guessed it, Lake Mead over the course of the next few decades. The purpose of this was to expand agricultural and residential activity in the southwestern United States. And, well, for the most part, it seemed to work. But here's the thing. When planning the project, the team of researchers had to make an estimate of how much water from the river they could use every year for different activities, and after taking readings from some flow gauges over a set period of time, they found the river's annual supply to be around 17 million acre feet. And to be on the safe side, they rounded that down to a neat 15 million acre feet of annual water supply, a figure which they use in all of their planning. But here's the thing again. According to more modern research, their numbers were actually skewed as a result of a wet spell in the region, which they were not aware of at the time. In fact, they missed the mark by nearly 5 million acre feet. This means that the project has been consuming at least 20 to 30% more water each year than the river would have supplied without climate change. Now that alone is worrying, but another study revealed an even more alarming fact. You see, Scientists in the 1990s had been trying to figure out the geological history of the Colorado River watershed. For this, they used a unique method. 
There's a rare tree species found in the area known as the bristlecone pine. And the important thing that you need to know about the tree is that A, it can live for thousands of years, and B, its growth rate can change depending on how much water is available. And that change can be seen through its tree rings if you cut it open. So by analyzing bristlecone fossils over the past 15,000 years, scientists would be able to figure out the periods of time when the river has a high compared to low water flow. And what they found was incredibly concerning. You see, after a lot of analysis, the scientists revealed that the Colorado River actually goes through wet and dry spells that can last up to 800 years at a time. Meaning, the river, which runs just fine for 800 years, can turn into a much weaker one within a few decades, and then stay that way for another 800 years. And wouldn't you know it? That shift from high to low is happening right now. That's right, not only is the Colorado River suffering due to climate change, overuse by major cities, and a messy estimate for the storage project, it is already due to the decreased flow for the next couple of centuries, at the very least. All of these things combined mean that the future of Lake Mead, the Colorado River, and the American Southwest, including cities like Phoenix, Las Vegas, and all of California, is in jeopardy, and we might be too late to stop anything bad from happening. That being said, the very people who revealed these truths are also hard at work trying to solve the issue. And if we were able to create a lake like this in the desert almost 100 years ago, if we worked together to solve it, this problem is manageable as well. And well, on that note, we must end today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed watching it, and if you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. With that, take care, and I'll see you guys next time.